consiste a...
Se ciò la ci usa C'è una nuova semi Sopra non sbagli e privi e una nuova
I'm here for her. Are you on the main?
高いよ。
on behalf of our mother, Margaret's family, and on behalf of this church, I want to welcome all of you to this time of worship in memory, in honor of our mother, Margaret Sakwa, and in a way to bring comfort to the family that she has left behind. I've then been asked by the church to let all of us know where to go when nature calls you. You will have to go by this uh, door and follow the signs. That's all that I'm told. Then go by this door and follow the signs. There will be so many telephone books around you to pay the ball. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather at this time as friends, family, and others in sorrow because our mom is no more here with us. But we also gather in hope because we know that we lived for Christ and therefore is with him. And so let us rise up as we reflect on a few scriptures. If I'm talking about the story, the Bible is in Kakra, the day in Kanshe, every day in Ewo, it will be ashes. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me, will never die. It's right when I want to be able to I want to be able to be able to The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. If we are seeing the people who are or how near my name be then so many are going to say, "Me di iviasi so enkumi." In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come together to sing to the praise of our God and in honor of our Man. Two typical Ghanaian songs, which were a favorite. We are meeting the Master and see it in the Jack God, hear my prayers and listen to me, Father who loves us.
in times like this when we gather, we take inspiration and comfort from the word of God and from the life of the person we celebrate today, which is our mother Margaret. And so I invite the readers to come forward, Daniela and Dashiell, if I'm right, to come forward for the first and the second reading. Thank you very much for the reading. As you would have seen on the program, I'm sharing this service with two other pastors. I just wanted to be sure if they are here, they are invited to be, be here. So if Pastor um, Zuhuli, Wuli Salam, if Pastor Wole is here, Pastor, please come up and join me here. And I'm sure if Pastor Otu is here, I will see you anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Pastor Wole will be preaching the sermon for us when the time comes. But we've come to the point where we're going to share our memories of our mothers life and we begin with the biography of her life and normally the family will have a representative to read that for us. Which became the most 
preferred me to read. And Timagi has 10 full blood siblings and 25 maternal half siblings. And Timagi was born in Asante Bekwai in Ghana and was brought up by her maternal auntie. And Timagi successfully completed her basic school education and attended Ya Asantua Girls School in Kwasi for her secondary education. From there, she pursued higher education within the Ghana Barclays Bank Training School, where she completed successfully as a banker and started a career in the banking sector in the early 60s. She was posted to Doha Bonofin Barclays Bank at that time. There she met an old acquaintance, Mr. F. E. Otu. They got married and God blessed them with three beautiful daughters, Messia, Eunice, and Beta. In 1985, caring for three daughters alongside her banking duties, she was quite a hassle for Auntie Maggie. That's her decision to resign from her banking duties and go into full-time housewife to enable her to have quality time with her children and family. Not only was she able to do that, but also raised the children of her other siblings, to name a few were Mylon Dakwan Osu, USA, and Ernest Inti, Germany. Deborah and then Chrissy, the children of her second cousin sister, Ifwa Fatahi, who whom from a tender age that they learned so well, you couldn't distinguish this from her sibling's children. Some of these children continued living with her for many years during the time of her full-time caring role. As industrious as she was, she tried to engage in petty trading such as banking and selling, example, cakes, bun and then pastries. She added selling bags of comments to her trade. As if that was not enough, she went further and engaged in the sale of salt to her numerous trades. This she did for a number of years at the Santa Bequai Central Market. Her life turned upside down on Saturday, 22nd August 2000. And Tim Aguil was involved in a traumatic road traffic accident in Asante Bequai while returning home from a funeral. She was admitted to the ICU at the Confanonchi Teaching Hospital of Kumasi for over three months after eventually making a steady recovery. She was moved to the main ward. And Tim Aguil sustained a minor head injury and even at the time of discharge, she was able to walk. She gradually regained her mobility back at home through traditional medicine. Life was never the same for Timagi. She completely lost her independent living skills and then had no choice than to be relocated from the pipe to Kumasi where her late mother and sisters were available to offer her every support that she needed. Even though she progressed from being worse to getting better, she still lost the opportunity to spend quality time with her daughters and family. For instance, she was not actively involved in her daughter's tertiary education. In 2008, she relocated to the UK to join her daughters, her daughters, Beta and Messia. And in between these periods, Auntie Maggie was going to Ghana to spend time with her second daughter, Eunice. 
in the extended family. Auntie Maggie was a born again Christian and a committed member of the Methodist Church Ghana Asante Mekwai Assembly, where she was an active member of Susanna Wesley and the Christ Little Band. As a youth and young adult, she was a Christian in Ashanti Bekwai, in Ashanti Bekwai Kumasi, and the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Dunkwa Omafin Assembly. Whilst in Ghana, Auntie Maggie was not just a member of the Methodist Church, but was also a member of the Movement of Glory Prayer Army, MOPA. In 2014, Auntie Maggie survived again by the grace of God with daughter Peter in a fatal accident where their car was completely written off, but God kept both uninjured. On Wednesday, the 8th of December 2021, which coincidentally happened to be the day she was born, does the name appear after a visit to the hospital and subsequently to Lady for some groceries. Auntie Maggie gave her last breath in the arms of her daughter, Beta. Prayers were made when Beta saw a change in her. Paramedics were called, yet Auntie Maggie did not respond. We did our best to keep Auntie Maggie with us. We prayed, the paramedics did their bit, but little did we know that the maker wanted her back in her abode as she had already communicated with him. And who are we to contend with God? As the postmortem confirmed her death as being a natural cause, we believe she is peacefully and happily resting in the hand of her maker. Sister, Auntie Maggie, Mom, Grandma, Friends, farewell till we meet again in heaven. About a part of the year, the Uma, umane de Busia, Tawasi, a good mother, your children and family are grateful to you for everything you did, without through and from them whilst on earth. Amen. <laughs> Ghana, when we want to talk about how difficult it is to speak English, we say profil. But when you come to London, nothing fancy so I do. Thank you very much for um, leading us through that tribute. If I'm right, that is Frank. Yeah. Thank you very much, Frank. We will continue sharing memories of our mother, and this time we come to tributes. We have two tributes from children. The first one to be read, read by Baba Adame, and the second one by Bega. battled with sickness, 
that can only be understood by God, we know that we are with Jesus. Thank you for being a great mom, sister, as we called you. We love you and you remain in our hearts forever. Sleep well, mom, from the bundle of joy, Ifwa, Ajwa, and Mansa. Thank you. Three foot from your last baby. You, you will miss me, but let me go, my daughters. For this is a day we all must take, and each must go alone at the time, at the appointed time. So, it is my time, and it is all part of the master's plan. A step on the road to home in heaven, where I shall meet you all again. When I started learning how to talk as a child, the only name I could hear around me was sister. And this was my mom. This is because she was the eldest of my siblings. So I also followed suit by calling her sister until later days in her life when I learned to call her Auntie Maggie because some relatives were calling her as such. There is more to it than just to say I love you. In fact, I admire you, I adore you, I cherish and appreciate you wholeheartedly. And I'm thankful to God to have had you as a mother. The Lord couldn't have given me a better mother than you. In you, I have a family father, a sister, an auntie, a friend, a companion on Friday morning at Fire Point Ministry as well as a daily pillar around my life. You are that woman, so selfless, patient, easygoing, flexible to accept just to prevent, flexible to accept anything just to pre prevent stress on others. These Indefatigable qualities of yours are something you have instilled in me, with me. I appreciate and live by forever. You gave me your banking profession. You gave up your banking profession because of us, your children. You did not only train me to know God, but also to take my education seriously and to dress decently as a young lady. You were very mindful of our appearance, such that you would go extra mile to iron all our clothes, especially school uniforms. You reminded me of 6 March, Independence Day, where you would put a special touch on our uniforms for the marching parade at the Bequai Jeffries Park. You allowed me to sleep till late morning on vacations and defend me when people complain. Leave her alone. She is tired. She would say, you rescued me from my other sisters when they were after me for being naughty towards them. Then you would always pull me aside, tell me of, and advise me to stop such behavior. With my curiosity, you never get tired answering my continuous numerous questions. You made my primary school and secondary school so lively that the memories remain fresh with me now as I look on you traveling with me from the white train station to Tungwa on a free train station just to ensure my safe arrival at Bwapis and secondary school campus. You visited me monthly as a boarding student with every goodies I needed. I was hoping to have this sort of support from you when I went to University of Ghana in 1998, but this was completely lost due to your involvement in the fatal accident at that time. You had no input in my university education. I therefore had to hire my academic graduation gown for an extra day to Kumasi from Accra, University of Ghana, just to take a photograph with you at home. That day, we both shared tears 
prior to the photograph, as you were pleased to see your last baby as a graduate. After graduation, our life was limited to phone calls from 2001, when I relocated to the UK. You were pleased. I had to say, how to stay in Ghana for six months in 2005, prior to pursue my second degree. I record your voice. God says you must rest. On the 25th of December 2008, when I came to meet you at Heathrow Airport, following you and Rafa with my best friend, Afia Bima Akabu, I was surprised to see you in not so good health, to the extent that you could not do many day-to-day -day activities for yourself. But thankfully, it did not take long. You regained your health and started doing things independently. Your sense of appreciation for little things is what kept me going and to keep looking after you regardless. You appreciate every little thing that I did for you by saying thank you to every task I did with you. We laughed together. We traveled together on buses. Even when I started driving, you told me how confident, confident I was and you would go anywhere with me. You were very good at telling me off when needed. I will never forget this day. After a service at Mountain of Fire and Miracle Ministries called in Reeves Corner, that time where I joined a king to speak to pastors in charge. After the service, I recall was in the queue. You called out for me, Mansa, and I responded, Sister. And you said, Come here, in fact, it can be very terrible for someone who is on man. And in our tree language, we are in our same emotion. I asked why. She exclaimed, What else do you do I want to hear from the pastor? Has he not said it all during the preaching? Said that she now has to wait for me. If she could go home alone, she would have left me behind. Honestly speaking, I became that father and got quickly to take her home. On another day, in 2013, I was at work and I tried several phone calls to Atim again just to check on her. She did not respond, so I got worried and I had to come home on my lunch time. Only to ask her, Auntie Maggie, why haven't you picked up all my calls? She said, I can't talk. Me to me, And I said, what you are talking? In a hug, we laugh together. We have had good and challenging times together. And I had planned, she would, and I had planned how she would meet her son-in-law and grandchildren for me. Oh, Auntie Maggie, sister, Debbie Margaret, you certainly did not wait to meet your grandparents from me. That you will come to, that they will come to know you, hear of you, share your memories with them. The reminiscence of being able to sing along with a ritual and applicate to you, your favorite song, Onyami Tiemasa, and the two songs you taught me in my childhood. When peace like a river and there is a and there is a redeemer during your last moments on earth makes me joyful daily. Life has been too quiet without you, my Lord. I have nothing to do in the morning. I have no excuse to keep at work with regards to care for you. I have no one to check up on regular. I have no one to check up regularly pass in the middle of a long winding community assessment. No more, I am going to sleep, my mother. Holding my emotions has not been possible since your departure from me. I have asked myself a lot of times what could I have done differently to keep you with me a bit longer. Indeed, you spoke to God to receive you, and He heard your prayers as per your favorite song. And after the order of the Deuteronomy 18, 18 to 22, if what the prophet says is not fulfilled, then it's not from God. God confirmed it through his servant, and you finally told us you want to go when you have indeed fought your fight of faith, finished the race, and kept your faith in him to the end. In November 2021, when I noticed Antima talking to herself, and I asked her, she said, I am talking to God. A week later, Auntie Maggie told her niece Abigail that she wants to die. Of course, I prayed with her and we broke her 
that she will not die, but only to declare the words of God. The following week, an offer of God to me, and so my best time was up for her to leave the land of the living to her husband in heaven with God. There was no bad case to suggest that death was so easy in my All these occurrences were immediate to me, but it was a tremendous moment of the result of her and death as a natural cause. Then I sat down to reflect all of the happiness, her talking to God, wishing to die, and the perfect end made sense to me. So I have confidence that I feel like you were in a much better place with your name. Obadamba, Enamba, Onyamba, Adamba. Obama, you need to see who am I. Get it, Yama Sakisi. They hear, they will meet you to the meet again.
Hemsted Chapel, where we were in Roadland, attendance prior to COVID 19 with your daughter, but on Saturday, and getting together with others when it was time for all together love. Today, we have all come to celebrate your life and say, May the good Lord receive you in glory till we meet again. Your time with the Church of God on earth is forever cherished and in our memories. Amen. So once again, thank you to all of you who have helped us to share memories of our man. We now going to take our hymns when peace like a river, and then Pastor Akoli will share the word for all of you.
bless you all this day. We thank you because we know you are here. Your presence is there. You promise never to leave us, nor forsake us. That you will be with us even up to the end of the day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the Lord that I know. Thank you for the glorious send of, of my man, my We bless you. Father, we just ask, Lord, that you will touch each and every one of us today. You will speak to us. You will touch each and every one of us. That we will not leave this place the same way that we are right. In the name of Jesus, let the entrance of your word bring healing, bring deliverance, and start a new beginning in our life. Jesus, mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. You know, most of the time when we are doing something like this, we call it glorious send off. That's what we say. So we say we are sending them off. But it is natural for us to actually to weep or to feel the way we are feeling. Even if my mind is 130 or 50, because we are going to miss her, especially the children and the family. So the number thing. But the verdict of redemption, Jesus will always tell them, weep no more. So if we believe we are going to, most of the thing I'm hearing within what people are saying or what we say as a Christian, because this is the gathering of the Christian. We say, oh, we will see them again. We will rejoice. That's what we say. But it doesn't prevent us from crying. So the word of God most of the time today is not for her. She's gone. You know that. She's not coming back again until that glorious day. But the word of God most of the time is for us. So please, for the next few minutes, let's just listen and just use this occasion to remind ourselves a few things today. So once, first of all, I just want to send my condolences to the children of Mama and the family. So I know Mama now for a few years uh, with a lovely daughter of hers, Sister Bata. Oh wow, when you are praying for a good daughter, I mean, Sister Bata is another level, looking after her mom and everything. My prayer is that Lord will reward you, not only you and other children who probably would even know. So for the next few minutes, I want to speak on what I call victory over death. For every one of us that is actually here, remember the word of God is not subject to debate. The pastor can misinterpret deliberately for their own selfish. But the word of God is said to you. You know why he said to you in heaven? He doesn't say to you in any church because we will change it. That's why you see people say, oh, my church is the one that is good. Your church is the one that is it's not good. Our church is good. You know we do that. Especially within the side. Thank God for God. He knows that. He deliberately made his word to set you in heaven. And it's not subject to change, but it can be misinterpreted, mispreached, and miss whatever we wanted to do and do acrobat with it on this side of the world. But when we get there, it will be only us and him. So the word of God is for me and it's for us, for us to know. Have it in our own mind to say, look, the word of God I'm going to hear is written by the Holy Spirit. And it cannot be changed. It is set to. And set to where is set to in heaven. Where I am from, if it's the word of God is set to there, they will change it. They will bribe you, they will change it. So, you know what? The memory of the righteous, according to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7, the memory of a righteous woman or man is blessed. So, my mind is blessed. Why? Because he's actually blessed with the wonderful children. Not because of time. Let me play God to uh, a few words today. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. Listen to this. He said, To everything there is season and a time for every matter of purpose under heaven. Verse 2. A time to be born and a time to die. So, whether we want it or not, if Jesus didn't come early, maybe all of us here one day is going to be like this, whether we like it or not, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how anointed you are. But uh, whatever you are, remember, some people also we are telling like this. Unless Jesus come and you know take us home. So he said, a time to be born and a time to what? To die. Time for every matter of purpose under heaven. Under heaven. So maybe quite a few number of us actually in the last few years 
We know some people probably have actually gone either to be with the Lord because of a lot of things that's happened. At least I know about three or four people very well. They have a very good job and they are in their prime time and their life is just cut short for some reason and they've gone. So remember, it's not subject to age. It's not subject to whether you are good or bad or whatever you have, whether you have a big house or not. One day, it will be like this. So I want to speak on victory over death. Moses, which is most of the Psalms of the book of Psalms is written by David, but this particular one, Psalm 90, was written by Moses. Psalm 90, verse 12. He says, teach us to number our days that so that we will have what? The heart of wisdom. Teach us to not put that in our mind. I'm going to come back to that particular verse. Teach us to number our days, that our days are numbered. Because so that we will have the heart of wisdom. Wisdom to live. And you know, the beginning of wisdom is what? Is to fear God. That's the beginning of wisdom. Why should Moses actually wrote that some night? Because God has already told them. You remember, he took them from Egypt, isn't it? They are taking them to a place of full of milk and honey. There was a lot of miracle that happened. You know, we at Costa, we love miracle. Miracle night, dominion night, all manners of age, we call it. The same God that opened the Red Sea for them, he did so much for them. And he told them, because we're going to come back, I want you to actually remember uh, that scripture, Psalm 90 verse 12. But quickly, before we actually go to that scriptures, for us to know that this is not the end of Lama. If what we are saying, if what we are writing, if what we are preaching is not just mere delusion, we are going to see her. Let's quickly see what the Word of God says. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to try to make it speak because of, of time. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 16 to 20. He said, For let's, let's just listen to this very carefully. He said, For if the dead are not raised, if the dead are not raised, this is Apostle Paul speaking, if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If the dead has not raised, Christ has not been raised. Verse 17. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is mere delusion, fruitless, futile, fruitless. And you are still in your sin. In verse 18. And for that, those who have died in the spiritual fellowship and union with Christ have perished and lost. Verse 19. This is just to give us hope. That is not ending here. So by the time we come back to verse 19, verse 12, so we can connect it together. For those of us probably who think, I've got it, everything connected together, I don't believe in God. In verse 19, yes. He said, if we who are abiding in Christ have hope only in this life, and that is all, then we are all people of most miserable and to be pitied. In verse 20. But the fact is that Christ the Messiah has been raised from the dead. And he became the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. He became the first one who have fallen asleep. Let's quickly move on. Now in Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, 19. For those of us who probably we are Christian, we are born again, we for some time. When we became born again, we forgot the purpose of being born again. We started to play church. Pastors started to put themselves in position of Christ. They believe that it is one Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, 19 says. In verse 18, and I am, this is the Jesus speaking, and the everlasting one. I am the everlasting one. I am living in the eternity of eternity. I die, but see, I am alive forevermore, and I possess the keys of death. Jesus was saying, I possess the keys of death and Hades, the realm of the dead. In verse 19, he said, Right, therefore, the things you see, he was saying to John, which was in the spirit in Revelation. Write, therefore, the thing that you see in Revelation. What they are and signify and what is to take place hereafter. What is to take place after today with Mama has gone. What is to take place after all the Rasmastaras we are doing in churches, in being born again, in all the titles we are giving ourselves and all manners of issues and behavior. Write it down, let them know. Remember what I said, the word of God is set where? It's set in heaven. It can never be changed, it can misinterpret, it, it can mispreach. But guess what? The word of God is not subject to debate. You can't debate it with God. There's nothing you can do about it. 
Now, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, I think they will write all this for us to hear what the word of God is saying to us. He said, Then, verse Revelation 14, verse 13, then I had further, I had further. John was saying it, I had further, perceiving the distinct word, voice of in heaven, saying, Write this, blessed, happy to be envy are those that die from now on, who die in the Lord. He said, write it down, remind them it was in Revelation, so that when they read it, it's not only about dominion night, it's not only bring your word to anointing oil and all sort of thing. Write it down. After all that, this is what is going to happen hereafter. He said, write it down. Who died in the Lord? Yes, blessed happen to be envy in him, says the Spirit, in that they may rest from their labors for their works. Here it is. You know, sometimes we say when we die, we come with nothing and go with nothing. Have you heard that a lot? That is not true. That is not what? It's not true. Then what is the basis of God rewarding them? If it has to be reward. Hear what the revelation says. He said, yes, blessed happy to be envy in the same spirit, in that they may rise from their labors. For their works, their deeds, do follow, attend, accompany them to heaven. Is that, are we going empty handed? He said, he will accompany them. Their deeds, their action, their behavior. We accompany them. When you accompany somebody, that person is not alone, isn't it? He said, write it down for them to remind them what is going to happen here and after. So whether our pastor tells us on Sundays or not, what they tell us mostly nowadays, every one of us, we want to know if it's really good for us. So in Revelation, let me really move on because of time. Revelation 20, verse 11 to 13. Let us pay attention to below, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and one who was seated upon it, from whose presence and from the sight of whose face art and sky fled away. And no place was found for them in verse 12. I saw the dead. I saw the dead in Revelation. I saw the dead, great and small. So there are great people. There are small people who can die, isn't it? He said, I saw the name, great and small. They stood before the throne, and books were open. Then another book was open. There are so many books on the throne. The one that sits upon the throne is not your pastor. Please remember that. It's not my pastor. Before you die for your pastor, before you do anything, remember, on that day, it's going to be you and you on the throne. Now, hear this. Books were open, and the dead were judged, sentenced by what they had done. Their whole way of feeling, their whole way of acting, their aims, and their end efforts, in accordance with what was recorded in the books for them. So, are, are we going to heaven empty handed? So, the question is who was recording that book? Who was recording it? Is it your uncle? Is it, is it your friend? According to what was recorded for them. So, Mama is gone. So, to me, when I have the privilege of ministering like this, really, it's a privilege and it's an opportunity for me personally to have a reflection on my life. That she's gone, she's done. So, the next thing is him, her, and is our creator. But for me and for us, we still have the opportunity to do it, to be here, to listen to the word of God. So let's quickly move on uh, because uh, remember, he said, I have the keys of life and death. Who has it? Jesus said it. He told John, he said, you must write it. That's why we have revelation so that they will know what is going to happen here and after, after they've done everything. Now let's go back to Psalm 90 verse 12. Now, now, when so teach us to number our days that we may get us a heart of wisdom based on what I've just read, that when on that day my master's not going to be there, nobody's going to be there. Now it's going to be me and my aim, my end for my action. Do you know why Psalm 90, because of time, let me play brief us. Do you know Psalm 90 verse 12, why it was written? You remember when God actually told them, I'm going to take you to a place that's full of milk and honey. He Red Sea was parted for them, isn't it? Rest was parted, Jericho Wall was fair for them. Now we do all night prayer meeting. Jericho Wall, night must fall. The same people he fed for, all of them died one by one in wilderness. In Numbers, 
because of time in Numbers chapter 14, verse 20, 26 to 28. Let me quickly say what God said to Moses, the same God that did so many miracles, that disgraced Pharaoh, that opened the Red Sea for them and everything. The same people along the way, they've now so realized they are enjoying, they have, they have time to, they have houses, they don't have time for God anymore. You know, pastors are getting, you know, fat in their own thing, doing their own whatever they want to do. He now said to him, Moses, these people have lost the purpose of my calling them from out of Egypt. Go and tell them, the place of rest I promise them they will never enter it. Who can change God? How many prophets can you gather to fight God? How many? You can have one in abroad, have one in everywhere, all over the world. You are wasting your time. The only thing to save me is to abide by the word of God. By keep to the word of God, that sin as we leave this place, to say, Lord, what does it take for me to actually have the wisdom, to obey you, to love you, to serve you, according to your word. Now, in, in Numbers 14, why Moses wrote it? Because God has said it. He knows God will never change his mind. He said, my word, I will never change. I am a covenant keeping God. Have I said it? The only thing we quote it is when we want to get something from him. Have you said it? Will you not do it? But has he written all this? Will he not make it to pass also? He will come to pass, whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not. He will come to pass. It's in Numbers 14, 26 to 28. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, he told them in verse 27, how long will this evil congregation, congregation, so they are the congregation of God no more against you. Verse 28, tell them as I live, says the Lord, what they have said in my hearing I will do to them. Because they said to God, we can't go anymore. Why should we go and fulfill the purpose of God anymore? You know what to do but to rest and enjoy. He said, go and tell them. Did you know truly all of them that left Egypt, none of them actually got there? Millions and two, only two people that got there. How many? Those names? Who are they? Joshua and what? And Caleb. The rest of them are their descendants. He said, from 20 years ago, they did not get to the promised land. And none of them actually got there. So that's not where I'm going, but for us to know when God said it, when He determined, you're not going alone to heaven. You are going with your what's your our aim? What are you doing that you think nobody see? Can anything? That's why David never lost the war. He knows, he said, when I run into underground, you are there. Whatever, where are you at that God is not? Is it your bedroom? Is it your covenant covenant? Is God not see you? One day it's gonna be like this. And there's no coming back to rectify it. So please, let's have a reflection. And say, today, like Mama, it's going to be a time for me. Mama did so well, according to what people are writing. I'm sure that's not a lie. That's true. She did well. I will know her briefly for a few years. Committed. Despite of her challenges, she will still come. So let's people play around this up. In Genesis 1, 26. For us, this is for us now. God said, Let, let Father, Son, and Holy Spirit make man in our own image after our likeness. Guess what? He said, Come. God is love in our body. So we are made of the image of God. Is God a with nose and eye like me? God is the spirit, isn't he? He said, Let's make man in our own image. What are the image of God? He wants the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to come to let us. God, God is love. He said, in everything that you get, as I quickly rush this through, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 to 30. So God has appointed some in church, here it is, for us to know all the gift of God that is, we are, that is happening now. The gift of God and the fruit of the Spirit, the gift of God is for the elevation of the body of Christ. For us to know God and see God, we need the fruit of the Spirit. God is love. He said, everything that is being displayed in the church of God. He said, by every means, because of time, of course, have the gift of prophecy, gift of prayer, gift of whatever the gift that you have is for the edification of the body of Christ. He has no your So that means that's what gift God gave you for his own purpose, for God's purpose. Of course, it will be profitable to you, of course. When the one is doing a pastor, people will bless you, isn't it? People will do that. He said, all this is for the gift of God. Now, because of that, let me rush through because I'm very conscious. He said, do you possess extraordinary power? Do you have everything? Do you speak in tongues? Bible says all these are, are nothing. 
Do you understand? He said, all these are nothing. Then what did God's character we are talking about? He said, faith, hope, and love. He said, the greatest one is you want have love. He said, if you can speak, you can speak in tongues like this, you don't have love. It's, it's nothing. Whatever you have without the love is nothing. Finally, as I write this up, you remember, somebody came to Jesus and said, well, how, how can I get to heaven? What is going to take me to get to heaven? He told the guy, go and sell everything. The guy said, I've done it because he's a lawyer. You remember in Luke chapter 10. He said, what else do I do to get to heaven? So he started giving him the story of the good Samaritan, all of us. Knew. The first person that passed through that place is who? They are priests, they are pastors. They didn't pay attention. They walk away. The next one that passed through is the priest, those that walked on the altar. He was busy. The pastor couldn't help because he was the first, he was the special guest of honor that is going to minister on that day. He was too busy. Then the next one is the Levite. The third one is the Samaritan. The one that even wasn't a Christian at all. Jesus now told me, out of them, which one that did the, the purpose of God? And he said, it's the Samaritan that did it. So brothers and sisters, as we reflect because of time, as we reflect in the life of Mama, let's go back home. You know, we want power and we don't want to have love of God in our spirit. We want everything, we have everything, but no love of God. Let's have that revelation that says, Lord, from today, Lord, abide with me. Just, Lord, speak to me. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, quickly, we this time. Thank you very much, Pastor Wally, for that wonderful message coming to us. Let us all stand up at this time as we commend our mother. Say, I'll mention her name three times. And at each mention, you say we be thanks be for Madame Margaret de Savoie. Thanks be for Madame Margaret de Savoie. Thanks be for Our mother, our sister, our friend, our grandmother, Margaret and Savoy. That's the speech of God. Into your keeping, O oh merciful God, we commend your servant, Margaret and Savoy. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the joy of your everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints 
in life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will all sit while the family continues to stand and pass the house free.
come in the power of God's Holy Spirit. May God's comfort come upon all of us and the hope of Christ's resurrection give us hope beyond death. In the name of Jesus. Amen.
Any busy for the
Thank you. <laughs>
as it has pleased the Lord to call our mother Margaret to himself. We who are remaining and remembering her commit her to the earth. A fan coffin and so unconsumed Untuma in the certain hope that the dead in the Lord shall rise again. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, for this is true. Blessed are the, the dead who die in the Lord, for they shall rest from their labors and their good deeds will follow them. In Shrine Mona, who will read him? Nasun Sumnis in you, Momohu, Honey Brim, and Honey Yumapa, Biji, Honichi. In the end, my meaning Yuma Pandinachi, Nahano so, Yensu, a baby feeling Yuma Pim, a handsome Yen Bersua, Yen Yumapa, a Dinachi. May the good works of our mother Margaret follow her, and may we learn from her example. So that when it's our time, our good deeds in the Lord will follow us. Let's pray. Father, your word declares in the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus that you are the resurrection and life. And all who dies in you sleeps. That is the comfort we take with us today. Knowing that our mother sleeps and we shall surely meet her again and for all grieving hearts and minds and souls here today we take this comfort that indeed together with her one day we shall all rise up again to our glorious inheritance where we shall meet once again with our mother we commit her indeed unto your peaceful rest ma'am we say we rest well but we meet again. And for those of us remaining, we pray for the grace to be able to endure and to emulate and to fight the faith as you did and to live a worthy example for others to follow. For this we ask for and many more grace upon us and the family gathered here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, oh my Father. Forgiving us
Sundown Park. I hold an action in your Thank you all once again. Mama, young Jesha, let's receive the benediction. Let us all go in peace, in the power of God's Holy Spirit, and in the hope that we have in Christ's resurrection, that we too will rise again with our mother. On the last day and the blessings of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit go with us lead us protect us and guide us now and forever Amen, Amen. Um, as we are going, as we said, there will be a lot to eat and drink and before the funeral itself, yes. And as I said in the church, there will be opportunity also to support the family. But M said tradition be also a bomb. 
enti obi enji na hata so na em go round ah yen fa we wo okay na obi fe go round my yen na eh bra wo hata so no kakere bia e wo wo sem no o de tu ma na I
Okay, family and loved ones, uh, thanks very much for tuning in to see to the farewell of our dear Auntie Margaret in Safwa. Uh, we finished with the intendant and now heading to the reception place. Um, so, Depending on how that goes, I'm going to find a little bit of it. But if not, uh, I'll come back in the evening between 6 and 8. Uh, where the final funeral light that is being done will be live streamed. Anywhere to see the final Baba. This one, the Baba said, uh, we see a crown, Cassia, you want to see the Baba. I'm going to send you the coffee. Let's go. The bear, you will have to travel. Why? You will.
apparently on base ye failure in answer the free I had to do it via your banner or more my age out to do also a more train or more failure I'm none to your own some base failure I'm none answer the free as it a chair more by a the reefs negusu na fear the jaho a call a call the via the bay to us
Got a candy camera. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Any room yet? Uh... No. On the on the. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm Oh, sir, we'll be a hard time for you.